the old age conversation is not going to go because we mm-hmm. had this conversation before, yeah. But with everything that's happening with mm. what's happening on the streets or whatever, mm. yeah, people are always trying to tie it to something. So yeah. for ages, people were trying to tie um, all of the road stuff that's happening with drill music and all of that, yeah. yeah? And with music and whatnot, yeah. And then you'd say some people would be like, well, you don't blame films though. But then when you lot make a movie like this, they all of a much. sudden you have a couple of people that come out, yeah. a, a small minority, or um, may it be like, not, not, not anything bigger than that, but come out and then say, look, like you man are like, why don't you do something different? Or are you lot like, yeah, yeah. Um, I don't know, perpetuating the gang violence and yeah. all of that, yeah. We had this conversation a couple of years ago yeah. and I can see that it's a conversation that doesn't go. What, like, how do you feel about that now though? I just feel like, you know what, we're making a movie. Our film is no different from you watching The Purge or Takers or any other blockbuster movie that's gonna come out. Like, do you understand? There's gonna be bare films coming out this weekend that's got shooting, that's got all these things happening in it. But as soon as this young black man on the screen is seen as threatening. So for me, it's like, you have to just take those people with a pinch of salt. Do you understand? It's a 15, you know, it, it, it's a film. You know, you're meant to go there to enjoy it as entertainment if you're watching any other film. I don't feel that us as filmmakers have to be responsible for the whole of society. Like, we do have a certain responsibility, but at the same time, look at the positive of the film. Like, it's, it's, it's black men on the screen that you hardly ever see. You know, it's a black cast, it's two black directors. You know, we made a movie, it's out in the cinema. Mm. The fight for that is crazy. You yeah. know, we had a Leicester Square premiere. There's so many good things about this film why do you want to pull down the one little thing that you want to associate with black people because when the craze movie gets made nobody says nothing when the scarface gets made nobody says nothing when purge is getting made when all these other movies are getting I've made i've actually never heard this is just me personally but remember bearing in mind i'm a casual film watcher yeah. so i say that out loud and proud yeah in all of the small times that I've been watching films out of my life, yeah, I've actually never heard anyone relate any type of violence on the streets or whatever to a movie. To a movie, this exactly. Is, it's just the it's the first time when I see it. When we do it, is when I see yeah. it being a and, film. and 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 they're always looking for someone to be the escape goal. And yeah. why not it be us? Why why like why would it? why use these guys as a scapegoat oh they've got guns in the film they're flipping cars they're having shootouts in jamaica but you know you watch any other movie you watch eastenders I, like i don't even watch eastenders i looked on it the other day people are getting shanked yeah there's or guns from windows and shit like, like that. people are pulling out guns in the vic you know yeah. nobody says that's representing east london you know that culture, they're not, they, they're not saying that. And that's yeah. on primetime TV. So stop using me and Femi as your escape goal. When James Bond, I always say that, like, is running around Leicester Square, jumping in Bond Street train station, having shootouts, all sorts of things. Like, could you imagine me and Femi running through Leicester Square or Bond <laughs> Street train station? It will be, bruv, we'll have armed police out. Everybody will be out. Yeah, yeah. So why, when we watch it in the James Bond movies, it's not threatening. You know uh, what? Ultimately, uh, that argument is premised on racism. Yeah. I'll tell, you, I'll tell you the truth. The reason it's premised on racism is that it's always forwarded towards black content makers. There's always something wrong when a black content maker makes something about violence. So, like, you know, white people, like, could make anything about anything. White content makers, white directors could make films about anything. They never even really have to explain it. They just make it. And no one says, why did you make this film? Do you think it's going to influence kids to do bad things? No one ever asks them that. And then on top of that, like what happens is that at the same time, like, you know, what you get is, um, what you get is black people then imbibe these arguments and then start using it against ourselves and we'll forever like colorism yeah no like and we'll forever like ironically no but like we then imbibe these like we learn these arguments and then we start saying it against because what happens again is like when a kid gets stabbed mm. yeah within a black kid gets stabbed so yeah what happens is the argument goes where are the black community leaders but black people don't live in ghettos in isolation we live in a society where our community leaders are like 
the teachers at school who are not necessarily black like they they're mixed the 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 you know local governor the local councillor and so on and so forth so like but the minute anything happens within the black community like or they they people seek to blame things within the black community but i didn't grow up just consuming black content like J nikki said we watch james bond like i've always watched james bond it's like a staple of my life mm -hmm. like you know we watch eastenders at a certain point i don't watch it anymore but there's no black kid that grew up here in england that can claim that i've only ever i only ever communicate with black people i only ever watch black content do you get what i'm saying mm -hmm. so like if you're gonna blame our content then you need to blame all other Everything. content mm -hmm. Otherwise, that's a racist Keep argument. It. Every Christmas, someone got murdered in East Enders. Every Christmas, or married, oh, yeah. or, married. or married, or both. Someone, both. <laughs> you know, someone's dropping on Christmas Day. Yeah, I yeah. think the last one, somebody got dashed out of a building. Or yeah, like someone's that. getting buried something underneath. Like that. The, do you understand? Yeah. So what are we saying is that happening everywhere? Uh, you know, so, does everybody go out and murder somebody on Christmas Day because they done it on East Enders? I just feel like if you're gonna critique violence in our films, then you need to critique violence in every Everything. film. Yeah. And otherwise it's racist. And you know what? Otherwise I'm not even answering that question again. Yeah. Because it's like actually what you're asking me is an argument premised on racism. Word. Word. I get that still. It's mad anyway, like I just think that it's a, it's as the culture grows and more films come out and stuff like that and more of these type of films come out, there's just gonna be more and more of these debates, but it's boring to me. Like seriously, it's boring to me. And even what you just said before, like not even wanting to answer that question again, that's kind of the, 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 the vibe that I'm on at the moment. I'm getting asked to go and like have talks here and there or whatever. And I'm getting asked some of the same questions all of the time when it comes to these things. And I'm just getting very jarred by it. Yeah. But on the flip side of that though, what I will say is, is that maybe I had the common sense to just know that I'm watching a film. But yeah, I'm not gonna lie. There's been enough times where I've watched a film and that, and I've just been inspired to do a madness. Real quickly. <laughs> <laughs> no, but you know what it is. You know what it is like when I watched when I watched Paid in Four. I wanted to sell hella crack. But do you but, know what? I've never. Do you know what's mad about that? I've but, never felt no, like joking, that. I've joking. never. You know when do you know I watched Paid in Four, do you know what? I've That's never. Not my do you know what? Ever. I've never watched a film and felt like I want to go and do that. Yeah. Do you know? You know what I'm saying? Like I've never watched something and felt like. I want to do that because somebody else is doing that. Like, I, I, I'm not, I just don't think it goes well, But like. maybe at the same time, maybe other people do. Yeah. Like, you know, like, let's be real. Like, I'm not sitting I there. don't think that's a movie thing. I, though, I'm not know? even sitting. I think that's a mindset That's thing. a mindset that's, that's a mean. mindset Do you know that's what? That's deeper like, issues. Because I, I had a debate on, on Radio 4 about this with someone like a while back. Even during our edit, they came into our edit and they were interviewing me about this. And like, we got into a big argument about it because I'm like, actually, the problem is not films the problem is not music the problem is your upbringing yeah. the problem is state your social mind. economic and state of stand, mind. like status like are you from a poor home mm. the problem is all the circumstances that you know so, like your family and society and the government should be dealing with before the film before uh, yeah, the music yeah. before all of and so like you know when we've dealt with like you know when we've when we've like delivered world peace when we've stopped children in England going hungry like because like there was certain man in you know what's mad about when we think about kids like child poverty and stuff like that like I remember there were men in my school that were broke they didn't have money for lunch that's mad mm. but we didn't really think nothing of it we just thought, oh, my man was broke. If you don't have money, yeah, as a child, you should have money for lunch. You should be able to eat lunch. But there were bare men. I went to a boys' school. There were a lot of boys in my school that didn't have pee for lunch. Mm. Do you get what I'm saying? That's child poverty. Until we get rid of that systemic poverty and stuff like that, we shouldn't even be talking about films and stuff like that. Right. Do you get what I'm saying? On a deeper political level, mm. this is a bigger debate. And like we're limit, we're minimizing the real, we're, we're almost getting rid of the real arguments, the real debates the real things that we should be discussing by just talking about music and film think and about music. if there was no music or film in the world it would be nuts like they're blaming dual music but these guys are making a living they're actually expressing it's stopping them from being on road do you understand <laughs> like they're doing actually good things they're making music mm. you know we're actually making films take away films and music from the world what will happen 
But I feel like there's so many layers to this argument, and there's it's, so it's one that could. Like you and I'm not sitting here saying actually films don't influence who you are and your mindset and stuff like that. Yeah. But what I'm not gonna sit here and and and, it's and not accept the root cause. it's not the root cause of street violence. The root cause of street violence is poverty. Is like you know lack of education is all of these things and people can sit there and say oh yeah education doesn't mean nothing this doesn't mean nothing that doesn't like you're lying like education mm. and like and, and wealth and all of these things matter yeah do you get what I'm saying and racism and like, yeah comes racism into, yeah. comes into play but I don't even I don't like talking about racism not because I don't think racism doesn't exist because like you know the other day we were on um, Jeremy Kyle show and I was like you know what um, when I meet people they say what country are you from mm. and Jeremy Vine uh, Jeremy, Jeremy Vine, 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 Vine <laughs> Sorry, not jumping <laughs> out. But like, and, and when I meet people, people say like, "Oh, wh- what country are you from?" And I'll say, "You know what? I'm 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 Nigerian, and I talk about my history and blah blah blah." And and because of that, I think Black History Month is important because it's a celebration of these cultures. People like there's like white people hitting me up saying like, oh, "How could you say that? That's so racist. How could you refer to white people as white people? That's like in insa- like." And I'm like, no. Like the fact is, the fact remains. My point is that like, about is about actually our position as black people and the fact that we should be celebrated. Mm. My argument is not about, you know what, people shouldn't ask me where I'm from or people shouldn't engage with me as a different person. We're the same. We should aspire to equality for all men. But until society is equal, we can't be having arguments about films and music. And like, they're they're like, they're pastimes. People can't watch films if they're hungry. And and the thing is, and also like, it's a genre of film. Like you are going to the cinema If you're into horror You watch horror If you're into crime thriller You watch crime thriller If you're into comedy You watch comedy You select the film you're going to So the audience should know What they're going to see So if you do not like Those sort of films Don't go You don't need to be there You don't need to be there Why is, why is someone saying Oh it's got this It's got that why are you watching it if you don't like that? Like we can't. For me, when they took down all the drill videos, it was I was conflicted because like the drill songs, some of them they were really talking about youths that like they were stabbing and stuff like that, and that's a bit mad to me because like I'm from the era of like Biggie, like one of the hardest rappers ever, rapping like about how how broke his mum was and his mum watching a documentary with his mum when she was like, no, we were never broke. What's he talking about? Like, do you get what I'm saying? Yeah. And like, so like I'm from an era where rappers were painting a picture. Yeah. I'm not saying Biggie was never road, but I'm just saying I watched this doc and Biggie's mum was really offended that he said that they didn't have nothing back in the day when she's like, no, we grew up in a nice house. Like, what are you talking about? Yeah, it wasn't but, that bad. Yeah, it wasn't that bad. And so, like, for me, I'm from an era where rappers, like, were painting pictures about their life. So, for me to hear these rappers rapping about youths that they stabbed yesterday... That was a bit strange to me. I couldn't. I feel, do feel like those need those should be taken down. Yeah, and I cool. feel and like the those... reason why I say that my 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 opinion has always been yeah, if you say something in your music right that later on you end up going to jail for in terms of a murder. So if you inflict pain on somebody else, if you kill somebody, you stab someone or whatever it may be, and you go to jail for that exact same thing, then it should be taken down. Yeah, absolutely. And I agree. And I, and I agree with that. And But then there were other drill songs that were taken down that weren't that. And they, the whole genre was being criticised. And for me, it's like, we're entering into a place where we're censoring what people can't and can't say. We're entering into, because like, even so, like, let's, we all agree that there's roadman in England, yeah? And like there's there's roadmen that are like some of the guys in the intent in England. Yeah. And so basically the argument I know a fecky. Yeah, yeah, exactly. And not the argument goes, people like those guys, their stories don't deserve to be told because it's too street. So we should censor it. Okay. If we go one step further with like, oh, you know what, the intent is too violent, so what should we do? We should stop people making but films. We would like, write books about. Yeah, the do you craze, get what I'm saying? And so, and like, we would write books about the craze movie, and we would make ten thousand Essex well, boys, the, and we'll make the ten thousand football factories. And Nikki, what the what the new because I call them new aged outrageists. Yeah, what the new aged outrageists would say: none of it's good. Yeah, but don't so, watch so, it. Then my my thing is: if it's not for you, don't watch it. Yeah, like do you understand? If you're not into that. Don't watch it. It has a certificate re- for a reason. Like yeah. it's a fifteen because the film council, the film people believe that somebody over fifteen years of age can watch this movie. Of course, you know. No I one. I think as well, man. I mean, I'm I'm lucky because I have a certain overstanding of certain things, and I try to teach my brothers and my younger ones around me 
as as such do you get me yeah and with that being said for me watching a film the majority of the time i always knew that it was a film the only thing that i, I questioned when i was a young buck was candy man i didn't stand in front of the mirror a bunch of times and say candy man <laughs> five times because i wasn't sure yeah. yeah i weren't sure yeah it could happen it might yeah. not happen and also i was thinking to, my, to myself candy man might not jump through the window today but if I say it five times today, he might come link me a couple of days later. So I wasn't going to take that opportunity to, <laughs> yeah. to do that. This but other is than so that, funny. But other than that, I kind of knew what I'm watching is pretty much a film. And I think it's the same. It's like a certain mindset. Do you remember? Mind real, state, real like, even guys like, if I'm speaking the- to my little brothers or whatever, yeah. Say they're watching a, a thing or they're listening to something. I always let them know. You do know that that's just not even real though, right? Yeah. That's not real. That's not That's not that's not necessarily reality and and it's most definitely not your reality yeah so you don't need to make it yours yeah and a lot of people will come up to a lot of people like guys who will say they're real world guys will come up to me and be like that's not real man that's not how it goes that's not how it is really on the roads and so- sometimes i like that of course because i feel like okay it's good it's not like that yeah man, because <laughs> this is a film yeah you know or someone says to me oh why don't you put some real guys in it or oh my heck that's or, a dumb like, thing to say. I hate say, when people Michael. say that, like, yeah, yeah. bro, it's acting. Yeah. Like, it's you know, a film. It's, it's not a supposed film. to be like. It's not meant unless it's based on a true story. Exactly. Even, film, even films that are based on a true story it's embellished. Have, ele- has yeah. elements of over exaggerations yeah. in it because they dramatize it to make it an f- actual thing. Do you get what I'm saying? Like, it's not always. When people, it's like, people come to me, like, you know, I really do this thing. Okay, I don't want you in my film. film then, then, exactly. Because <laughs> you really do this thing. Like, why do I want you in my set? If you really do this, uh, do you understand? You're not even saying that you used to do this and you're reformed and you're trying to better your life. Yeah. Like everybody in in the film are people doing positive things. Like they're great role models. Krypton Conan, great role models, you know. They've got restaurants, you know. They're massive artists selling out massive arenas. Fecky, a big artist, you know. Got, he got clothing lines, putting out albums, you know. Like all these people are role models to the young youth. Like they've come from the streets. You know, they've, they've, they've seen things, they've probably done things, you understand? But they've turned their life around. Mm. And if kids can see, wow, well, Fecky's a movie star, Fecky's got an album out, or oh, Captain Coney are in a cinema, they've got a restaurant, I can do that. That's inspiring. I, that's me. mad, bro. That's the creep. Listen, like. I think it's just what, maybe from where I've come from and what I've seen. That's I crazy. Know that some, for some people, they've grown up in it, so they're not. I'm wearing like Skeptic trainers, man. Know, Come on, like, who, who, who would have thought, like, these men are gonna have trainers and restaurants. Shout out to poet, by the yeah, way. Yeah, and all these things. Oh, oh yeah, poet did his thing yeah. over there. Yeah, yeah. 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 come on, man. Yeah, come cool. on. Like, and then, and then people want to talk about, oh, it's a negative thing. Oh, get out of there, man. All right, let's let me just talk about something positive because I was supposed <laughs> to mention this from time ago. Yeah, when when I went to the screening, one of the things that like seemed you like was quite passionate about when um just before the film started because you both spoke about what yeah. not yeah you were talking about how difficult even now it was to get the film in the cinema yeah when we did the episode time ago you mentioned that as well i thought that doing the stuff with ireland was going to make it a little bit no. more easier to get yeah. it in the cinemas yeah but um you spoke quite passionately about cinemas like not necessarily jumping on board the first thing I want to ask is firstly how do you even get a film in a cinema in the first so first of all to clarify everything Ireland helped us finance the film Ireland didn't actually put the film in the cinema we've got a distributor called Vertigo Releasing who are a film distributor remember Ireland's a record label yeah so they don't know nothing about putting they just keep ultimately giving you the piece they're obviously giving us the piece to do and do a partnership with them yeah so we now have to find somebody who wants to put this help us get this film in the cinema the craziest thing about putting a film out in a cinema you don't even know what cinemas is going into maybe until probably two weeks or a week before the release date so our film came out on what date did our film come out on the 21st of september and we didn't know what cinemas it was going in until probably five days before that that's a madness so when everyone's up, we don't know if it's in the view we don't know if it's in the audium we don't know if it's in showcase we don't know if it's in cine world we don't know because what they do they go and screen it to them and then it says remember it's not somebody from our culture yeah, i was gonna say who do they screen it to to you know who okay yeah is watching the film and they decide mm, we like this mm, no we don't and it's not somebody who understands the culture. It's not somebody who understands 
how black music and black f- film is moved forward. It's just somebody who doesn't understand nothing about us. So you're relying on this person to say, yes, it can come in the cinema. No, it can't. And then it's deeper than that. So you may get, a, they may give you cinemas, but they're gonna give you cinemas in an area that no one can get to. No disrespect to walk like wherever. <laughs> It's kind of open. Yeah, but they will, they will say, all right, you got the Odium, but it's not the Odium in wherever. It's not the Odium in London. It's not the, it's not Westfields. So we need Westfields. We need all the kids go Westfields. All the kids go Westfields, White City and Stratford. We yeah. haven't got those. We're not in Stratford. Uh, all now? All now we're not in Stratford. Oh, mad. That seems mad yeah exactly. but they, they know that but they like, know that so they, they, straight away they're blocking us there's bare blocks and they've actually said that do you do you not they actually said can that. you ask them why yeah yeah, yeah we've yeah. been going back and forth and well, what do they so say deep. It's it's so deep. we can't deep. even talk, talk about, about it. it it's so deep serious it's yeah, so it's bad deep. because like the thing is so when i sit so here, you get a response yeah, yeah. no yeah and when i sit here and i'm making assertions about black culture and racism and stuff like that it's like there's certain things that i can't even talk about because it's like if I spoke about it, it might block us. Even it might more. block us in the future. More. Yeah, so we have to play the game. There's of black, certain things. You know that it's like yeah, we have to play the game. We have to be careful what we say because we're still trying to make more films. And even when I'm like at the at the premiere and I'm like, you know, the, right now there's a cinema chain that won't show our film. Blah 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 blah. Like the film did so well in the first week. In the end, that they put us on in the second week. But in dead, but cinema, in dead cinemas in that we, not the ones that we wanted. Okay, so well, like, was like, it almost just to say, look, we just look, yeah. we're doing more something. like, yeah. listen, more like we want, we've got Crepton Conan, we want the two, two, the two cinemas in Croydon. No, we want a cinema in Harrow. No, we want a cinema in 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 Westfields. No, shit, man. So we're doing crazy numbers and we're selling out. But like, I know, one, but I, we 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 we're, we're in places that people have to super travel. You know people find it hard to get to places anyway. Yeah. You know, especially kids, they don't have cars, they yeah. don't have these things. And people like convenience. People anyway. like yeah, convenience, so imagine imagine they, like we are trying to like, you know, these cinemas that I've just listed to you, they like I know we could have generated 50, 60 K each in some of them. Do you get what I'm saying? And that goes towards your box office. Like maybe even like upwards of between all these cinemas, we could have probably generate upwards like of a quarter of a million pounds, just those cinemas that I just mentioned. Because of that's where our demographic lives yes. and hangs out. But they know that. But they know that, and they're and saying they no. They say they don't put us. But why are they saying no? Because they don't want you to be. The bottom line is they're gonna make money. No, but no, but it's no, deeper, but it's than, deeper that. than that. We're, we're changing. Culture. Basically, like let's be real. They don't want lots of young working class kids in their cinemas. Why? Because these cinemas are. Hu- Do you know what? Do you know why that's uh, weird to me? To be fair, I tell you why to it's be weird. Fair, to be fair, we cause us as a community cause we make everything's a knock on effect. So, like, when kids go to the cinema and two ends might link at the cinema and have a how fight. How often is that? It's happened. Yeah, but how but often it is that? It doesn't happen regular, but they've used one example. I'm not going to throw a film out there. I'm not going to throw no one under the bus. Another film, another urban film that came okay. out before the intent. It doesn't, it's not so hard for you to work out. There's a so there that. was a, they had an incident, yeah, and that knocked on to us. But that was three, four years ago that film came out. And let then, me let me say this to you though. The reason why that is weird to me, yeah. Again, this is me being a casual film watcher. Yeah. Mm-hmm. The reason why it's weird to me is because one, I would have thought that there's an opportunity for them to make money, as Callum did say, yeah. But two, on top of that, like, do people even still go to cin- to the cinema as much as they did before? What's, what's because that? because. I know that a lot of people have got the Cody box and all of that stuff. And even to be honest with you, let's take the Cody box out of the way here. Netflix are uploading quite regularly. Enough people are Netflixing and chilling or Amazon Priming and relaxing. I'm going to, I'm going to, this is something that me and him speak about all the time. So when we made the first intent. So the point I'm making is, wouldn't it be an encouragement to have people like- No, 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 no. He's going to make this point. I'm going to say something to you. Uh, There's two things. We made the first intent. So there's two layers to this. With black people, if we didn't release the intent to in the cinema, in the box office, to the black community, it's a flop. Oh, you didn't go to cinema, man. Your film's dead. You, you went straight to DVD. You went straight to iTunes. Fair. Yeah? They think that's not successful. If you don't have a premiere, it's not successful. Because we're, we believe by it being in the cinema 
and us having a premier. A premier, for us, a premier is a fail because it's cost. You're 100 grand down. Go to Leicester Square, do that, you're 100 grand down. To look off Leicester Square, all these things, you're a lot of money down. But it gives the perspective of people seeing it as big. We perception. could have released it into, yeah, the perception. We could have just released it on iTunes, out now, and killed it. But that doesn't feel like we're moving forward because at the same time, why are we not in a cinema like Fast and Furious? Mm. Going to the cinema is experience. Mm. It's a, it, it's big, isn't it? It's, you're in the cinema. It, me and Femi would probably make more money just releasing it on iTunes, to be honest. We would. You know, iTunes, cost, that. iTunes cost like five bills to put your film on. You know? Is so, it, yeah? <laughs> yeah, yeah. So they we... They do take a cut. They take a cut. Okay. But, but it, like, to but, get it but on... Cost yeah, yeah. It's so it's better for us to just put it on iTunes. And then with Netflix, how much does that cost? It doesn't yeah, cost. It doesn't they cost. pay they you. Pay it's you. a license. They pay you. Yeah, 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 yeah it's yeah, a license. Yeah. Oh, so you could It's not make... like Spotify. Everyone thinks Netflix is like Spotify. It's not like Spotify. you can't just... It's a license. But the thing is, not everybody... Like, getting your... Getting a Netflix deal is hard. hard. Okay. That's big. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's like basically they have to actually, they've got an acquisition person that actually Comes watches the film and buys yeah. it. Oh, okay. Like, so it's not, it's, not like, it's not like, it's not like. I realised that because of, there's like a lot of conversations about like the comedian specials and stuff yeah. like that because Netflix are giving off bare dough yeah. for some of them. They to buy it. They yeah, buy yeah, the rights yeah, yeah. to yeah, it. So like, you know, easy, they license. Everyone says like, get your thing on Netflix. That's a big thing. That's like, like saying, why doesn't everybody get a record deal? Do you get, sorry, I know maybe I'm jumping, sub, jumping. But yeah, let me just add, let me just add that to that cinema thing cool. what our films do though is that they drive people to the cinema that wouldn't normally go to the cinema okay because they want that experience so like the intent audience is not your normal re it's like you they're like you they're like I don't really go cinema that much but I rarely go cinema yeah, do you know what I'm saying it's like I never really go cinema and then you go if you go to the cinema on the weekend that intent opens and you look at the people that are going into the screen and you did a survey with them I bet you like 80% of them don't go cinema and also the reason I say that the reason I say that is one I've been to the cinema two when we put out the first intent we got an email from iTunes Apple yeah. from Apple saying listen why like why how are you guys getting people to open up an to, account to download your film? Because what's happening is a lot of people that don't have iTunes accounts have got the, them. that that have never connected a card to their iTunes accounts are connecting a card to their iTunes account and just yeah. buying their intent. Yeah, yeah. So like we're getting lots of new users. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Like how? How? They yeah. They're just like how they didn't they didn't get it. So like like so what actually it's almost like when you get a website you got unique visitors. Yeah. We are bringing unique visitors to your cinemas. Like people that have probably not been cinema since they were little kids will go and watch it because it's the man them's thing. So why would they not want that? Because they don't want those people in the it's cinema on mass. Oh, so they oh, come they on! You know what it's like. Want, it's like they don't want us in certain clubs. They don't want us. Yeah, it's, it's no, the same it's thing. It's like Libertine, same. basically. Yeah, it's, it's the, the same cinema, thing. Cinemas like Libertine. No, no, it's the <laughs> it's the same thing. <laughs> it's districts, bro. How can the cinema be like? Bro, districts? cinemas change. You know, like but you got, it's peas. Cinema, cinemas peas. Like, don't get me wrong. I go cinema, yeah, but I only go like every man and. You know, you yeah, got yeah, the couch yeah, yeah, yeah. and you can My mum goes to like the, you know, like the... You the, know, lounge, yeah, the, the lounge. Yeah, the lounge. Like yeah, that's yeah, what I go. That, but so. to a youngster, Cinema that's my is pee. Dumb. Especially, listen, my little brother's in a relationship right now, yeah? 18 <laughs> years old, whatever. He's got his girl. He's been with his girl for like a couple of years. Yeah, and that's that. Still, he's been, yeah, he's doing his thing. And I'm thinking to myself, hold on a minute. Like, what, like the last time I went to the cinema, that, that cost me about 60, oh, over an edge note. Oof. So for an 18 year old who's like in his young relationship self, wants to go to the cinema these days, he's got to spend a, at least an edge note, 50, 60 pounds for him and his girl if he wants to do all of that stuff. He could, and you're it's gonna expensive. Eat and you're gonna go to dinner before. That's what I'm saying, all of that. You could spend a bill. Easy. Bro, a bill, that's light. What you're definitely spending a yeah, bill. Yeah, the, the last time I went to the last time Girls are ordering wine at cinema also. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> like, <laughs> and you can get a different type of popcorn now. You can get some next type of popcorn that's like nine pounds and shit. It's mad. But uh, I don't know, man. You know but, what? But it's all positive. I know, like, it seems like we're talking about the negative things, but I didn't I mean, like, the fact that we've got screens already. Like, yeah. Do you get what I'm saying? Remember, you like, know? we were, like, 
what two guys like really like were one of the man them like yeah. we're making we came up with an idea to make a film we managed to get it like get a deal with Island we managed to get Vertigo to distribute it and like we've got like we had 80 screens on our opening yeah, weekend yeah, yeah. and we would have had more like if all the cinema chains came came on board straight away and so for us to be able to achieve that I think it's mind blowing amazing like yeah. and, and I, I I never really that's why I don't really like you know it's sometimes it's not good to focus on that stuff because actually the achievement is massive and the kids that are going to come after us they're going to be able, they're going to drink they're no going to achieve more it's opening doors like that we can't even imagine yeah. like what's going to come after like do you get what I'm saying we so, Jamaica we went LA so yeah, like yeah, I'm yeah. very grateful like you know like and I don't want to sit here and I don't want anyone to no. think that I'm not grateful for no, the opportunities no, bro, that I've had it doesn't had. come across like that do you know how it comes across to me how I interpret it yeah is that you are two dudes that have like really hustle to do something amazing yeah mm. and within doing something amazing as i said you have to hustle you got to grind and you're going to come through loads of div different obstacles yeah but at the end of it what it's all said and done you're sitting here with these movies under your belt and you've mm. done what you like what you what you have done you've achieved what you've achieved yeah and i just think that it's extra inspiring to see yeah. that because up, I say all of the time as well yeah there's so many different things that you can do in this industry now I feel like um, growing up yeah it wasn't like that like it felt like there was only one of two things that you could do and yeah. now you know having these type of conversations shows people that you don't even have to necessarily be in the spotlight you can be behind the scenes and create something monumental and, and 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 cultural classics by doing that do you get me and and you can change your life by doing that Ooh, there's definitely. so many different things to do so i think you two man it's so inspiring to see what you've done yeah and where you've come from and, I, and more blessings to you yeah, yeah, man, you, got, you gotta man, keep man, going and you up. can't you know overstand that you are going to have these obstacles and you're going to have uh, people that are not necessarily going to be on the same page as you there's going to be uh, political elements to it in that as well but just like you have been doing perseverance is key yeah? and you could easily you could easily from that first or second or third stumbling block turn around and say you know what fuck this man fuck I'm not doing that mm. but then where then where where would we be today if you didn't do that where would we be today so yeah there's man, more, more films to come man like cool. we're, we're not just making gangster films look out for our next film called Napa yeah yeah that's our next film that me and Femi are doing okay based on the I Napa thing um Sick. Yeah, man, just watch this space, man. But well, you two good otherwise, yeah? Everything nice, yeah, everything good, blessed, man. everything calm. Right, yeah, yeah. uh, Nikki's wearing chains now, you know? Oh, yeah, that's <laughs> what I'm saying, I know. Guys, Nikki Nikki's, coming, yeah, Nikki been, getting money. <laughs> you know, boys club and that, everything's just different. Yeah. Yeah. The trainers and that, knees out. Yeah, yeah, man's got his like, knees out, yeah, everything, yeah, boy. Yeah. Mad cream. <laughs> are you using different cream now? Bro, I use cocoa butter, bro. Like, which cocoa butter are you using? I actually use premium. No, no. <laughs> yeah, it's like, it's like premium butter. Too. Premium <laughs> butter. <laughs> no, I use coconut oil still. So do I. I use Just raw yeah, coconut yeah, yeah, oil. Yeah, yeah. What are you... You're not still... Are you using the, the one with the white bottle with the orange <laughs> uh, girl? man. That's I, old school you, still. I use actually coconut oil as well. I use actually coconut oil. Oh, okay, yeah, yeah. No. So my, the coconut oil I use, yeah. See, when it gets hot outside... It's, it's mad. It's like mad. Yeah, yeah, it's mad. It's like we put it in the fridge though, man. I use shea butter. Yeah, I put it in the fridge sometimes too. Shea butter is good as well. Is it, yeah? Yeah. Uh, be careful when you're doing all of that and going to Dubai and stuff as well you know one time I put the coconut oil when I went to Dubai flung it on my body and that went outside Jesus <laughs> crispy <laughs> what you bro, all of this stuff it, nah it just all started dripping Sticking, off me bro yeah, 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 yeah it was yeah. mad it was mad mad. mad 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 but yeah man bless up to you and the coconut no. oil you already <laughs> <laughs>